And uh, if you have been following in the art class series, we are now in volume five, the fifth DVD, if you have the, the DVD series. And uh, the first lesson on that is about, uh, the title of the lesson is, it's all about the grounds, uh, foreground, middle ground, and uh, background. And uh, just to, to clarify, uh, I'm not going to repeat that lesson because Pat Nepley goes into uh, a fair amount of detail and, and I don't really need to duplicate uh, what she covered. Uh, so uh, what I am going to do, though, is review briefly, and that is in, in any good composition, uh, you are going to tend to have uh, up to three elements and and those are typically the background whoops i'm drawing on the wrong layer and that won't work let me get over here and click on the layer i'm supposed to be drawing on that's the whoops now what's happening here i'm not sure there we go paint that's supposed to be painting uh i don't know if the opacity is turned down or what let me switch to marker okay marker there we go background It's not always fun writing with these styluses. Let me switch to a different pen, see if that works better. Middle ground. Whoa, that's way too big. Yeah, let's shrink that down. Yep. Middle ground. And foreground. Okay, and... So the background is often like the sky, if it's a landscape, and maybe, you know, if you've got real distant mountains or something. Middle ground, let's say this was a, a painting that maybe we got, you know, just some meadows in here in the middle, maybe a rock or a, you know, a tree or two. And then the foreground is what's right up front. Let's say in this painting, maybe we got a couple great big rocks and a, a huge tree. And I'm going to draw a really, really cool looking tree here for you. This is, uh, this is my extra special art tree. Okay, so, um, so in, in most works of art, you're going to have background, middle ground, and foreground. Um, today, because uh, Pat did a really good job of covering that in, in detail, and uh, you know, usually when I do these lessons, I try to look for things that she may not have had time to cover, and I try to fill in the blanks a little bit, but she covered it in pretty good detail. Uh, so what I'm going to do is first we're going to look at some uh, some pictures, photographs, uh, but uh, I'm going to kind of quiz you on background, middle ground, and foreground, and let you kind of figure it out as we look at these. And we're going to do it fairly quickly, but I'm going to show you a picture, and then I will give you a few seconds to uh, identify in your mind the background, middle ground, and foreground, and then I'll tell you what I think they are. Uh, and uh, then after that, we're going to draw a uh, fairly easy to do picture that uh, uh, is, uh, you know, it's kind of fun, and um, you can do it in a number of different media. So, uh, so you should be able to find something that will work with this. So, so let's switch back here, and I'm going to start showing you some pictures. And again, I'll give you a few seconds to tell me, or to, to think, not to tell me because you can't, uh, well, I guess you could if you commented, but uh, just think it in your head. Uh, background, middle ground, and foreground. Here's the first one. Okay, you got it in your head? Okay, in this one, I would identify the background. Uh, let's see, it's gonna let me draw on this. So this would be the background. And you, I would probably consider the mountains here among the background. The trees are going to be in the foreground, uh, excuse me, middle ground. And this nice meadow here, I would call foreground. Uh, and again, some of this is subjective. Some of it depends on, you know, your, your personal 
uh, view of things. And as you'll see with some of these, it's not at all uh, clear as to uh, you know, dividing between the three. So, uh, so we're going to go on from there. Let me just see if this will let me. Yeah, I'm just going to have to cancel that out. Okay, and so we're going to go back here. Okay, this one's different. This is a still life. Background, middle ground, foreground. What do you think? Okay, uh, the, the background's pretty easy on this one. Uh, what about middle ground and foreground? Uh, well, again, it, it really, you know, it's kind of a judgment call. Uh, you could say that this is middle here and that this is four or that these are middle and this down here is the uh, at the bottom is the foreground. Um, but um, I tend to not see a middle ground in this. I see a background and pretty much all of this as foreground. Uh, and again, that's uh, probably a debatable point, but that's that's kind of how I identify it. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, background, middle ground, foreground. Okay, uh, the sky, of course, is background. I would call all of these mountains in here part of the background. Okay, this section here with the rolling hills and trees, I'm gonna call that middle ground. And foreground is this guy plus this tree and all these rocks. They're in the foreground. Okay, ready for another one? Okay. Oops. Okay, whoa. What about this one? Background. Well, that one's pretty easy. Sky. What about uh, middle ground? Well, I don't see a middle ground with this one. I see a background and I see pretty much a foreground because I would consider all of these stocks foreground. You might say, you know, if there was a middle ground, it might be those blurry ones in the back. But I think this is a thing where you, you really just have two elements, background and foreground. Okay, let's move on. All right, background, middle ground, foreground. Okay, sky is the background as well as all of this distant area here. Uh, middle ground might be this, you know, I, I just said this as part of the background, but you could make an argument for it being the middle ground and for all of these trees and the guy on the rock being the middle ground, or you could call the, the guy on the rock middle or foreground and these trees, middle ground, and this tree here would also be foreground. Okay. Okay. All right. Background, middle ground, foreground. Okay. Sky, obviously. This mountain I would consider background. I would consider all of this probably middle ground and the rocks in this little area here is going to be foreground. Okay. Next one. Background, middle ground, foreground. What do you think? Okay, well, obviously the sky is background, and obviously these, uh, this, I guess this is a fence that's kind of collapsed. That's going to all be foreground. What about this area here? Is this middle ground? Is it background? Uh, depends on your opinion. Uh, I, I still consider it part of the background. I think all of this is is background you could maybe make an argument that all of these trees would be middle ground but uh personally i see two elements here you don't always have to have all three 
there are many works of art that do not have a background, middle ground, and foreground per se. Okay, here's a challenging one. Okay, background, middle ground, foreground. What do you think? This is a tough one. Um, you know, there's no sky visible in it, so it's kind of hard to call it, a, a, to say the sky is the background. Uh, all of these trees really are not in the background, even though their branches and leaves, you might argue, are. But uh, I would say if you have a background at all, if you call something a background in here, it's going to be, you know, that little area there. I would call maybe this tree in this part of the winding road uh, middle ground. And I would call these trees, these are all foreground trees, as well as the rest of the road and the hill and, and all of that. Uh, okay, so it doesn't always fit into you know, neat packages. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, background, middle ground, foreground. What do you think? Okay, I'm going to call the sky, obviously. That's pretty much a given. Uh, that's background. I would put these little trees here background. I would consider that. All of this, including the barn, I'm calling middle ground. And the foreground is the field of dandelions. Okay, let's go on. Uh, another one, kind of challenging. Background, middle ground, foreground. What do you think? Okay, again, the sky, obviously. Background. The pile of rocks. That's all foreground. Those parts are easy. Okay, what about the water here? Is that middle ground or is that background? I would say because it is blurred out and it tends to merge with the sky. In other words, you don't have a definitive uh, view of this little outcropping of land and the ocean. I would really call this background, quite frankly. Uh, I think the, the primary focus here is, is up here with the rocks. Uh, I, I would call this as part of the background. Now, if this was in a sharp focus, I would call it middle ground, but it blends into the back background. And so that's, uh, that's what I'm calling it. Somebody might disagree with me, but you know, that's how it goes sometimes with art. Okay, I love the colors in this one, Oop. but it's also a little bit challenging. Background, middle ground, foreground. What do you think? Okay, I see background, obviously. And I see foreground. Whoa, I didn't want to do that. There we go. I see foreground. All the leaves. Don't really see a middle ground in this one. Mostly background and foreground. And that's our last one. Okay, so uh, that's just a quick survey of background, middle ground, foreground. If you want more details on that, because Pat goes into quite a bit more detail, uh, then uh, if you haven't watched art class, uh, you know, you can find that lesson on volume five, the fifth DVD, uh, or volume five in the downloads, lesson one. It's actually lesson 17, uh, but uh, there you have it. So with that in mind, uh, we're going to do a, uh, a little drawing here, a little painting, and I'm going to do it kind of in the style of the uh, mixed media ones that I have done on the, the uh, Bible Stories uh, DVDs. Let me clear this layer. Okay, so what we're going to do is pull up my reference. This is one of the pictures that we looked at. Uh, 
And I really like this one. I'm going to blow it up just a little bit. Okay. Okay, now, um, if you're working, well, if you're working digitally, it's a lot easier to duplicate this. If you're not working digitally, if you're going to try to do this with physical media, uh, then remember what I always say, work with what you have, not with what you don't have. So, you know, figure out what materials you have and do the best you can to duplicate uh, what I'm going to do here. If, uh, if I were doing this uh, with physical media, I would probably choose watercolor for the sky. Uh, and then I would do uh, the, the uh, grass in the foreground with a black uh, Sharpie marker. Or you could use like black acrylic paint if you have that. Uh, but what you're going to want is you're going to want a really, you know, a really nice color mixture in the background. Uh, but then you're also going to want this area in the front to be nice and dark. Uh, you want a lot of contrast. So this is one of these, you know, background foreground pictures. There's really nothing in terms of a middle ground here. Uh, but um, it's a it's a fun picture to do. Now what I'm going to do in Art Rage is I'm going to do the sky uh, in pastel, and then I'm going to switch over to uh, to a uh, basically an oil uh, type paint, uh, and uh, so I'm going to do an oil or acrylic paint that will kind of duplicate the idea and give me some of these sharper points here, um, rather than uh, you know I can I can I can use markers in this software, but it doesn't give me uh, the the pointiness that the grass will have. So, so I'm going to go with uh, what would be an oil or acrylic look. So let's uh, start uh, with getting the sky in. And you can do this in, uh, in pastels, in regular pastels, if you want to. Uh, the problem with pastels is, uh, with painting on top of them, uh, is you're going to, uh, the pastels are going to want to mix in and blend with uh, whatever you're drawing on top. Uh, and so it, it, it won't work as well. That's why if I were doing this with physical media, I'd be doing it with the uh, watercolor. Okay, so uh, I've talked enough. I'm gonna turn on my pastel brush or pastel tool as they're called in Art Rage. And I'm gonna just kind of move this over. Uh, I've already gone in and selected the colors from the uh, photograph itself. So I'm gonna just start you know, throwing in some color here. I'm going to throw some of this dark, and I'm not trying to duplicate that sky. I'm just going to, I'm pulling the same colors, but I'm not trying to match every single, you know, cloud formation in it. Um, now, this is especially fun to do in pastel. Now, one thing you'll notice also is uh, that I am uh, uh, going to be using the actual blue of the paper tone as part of my sky. And that's uh, when you draw in pastels, uh, often you you almost always want to draw on a toned paper, not a pure white paper, because uh, the, the toning of the paper can actually uh, help you in, uh, in the colors that uh, uh, you're trying to get across in the sky. So, uh, so here I'm just coming back in again with uh, uh, various colors that I've pulled from that sky. And when you do a sunset, depending on how intense the sunset is, you're going to find that it's going to be, uh, it's going to get brighter orange and yellow uh, toward the horizon. Uh, and it's going to get redder, uh, up, redder and darker up toward uh, the, uh, the top of the picture. Uh, so I'm going to come back in here with a little bit more of this kind of bluish. Now you'll see my, uh, my pastels are mixing here on the screen. Uh, and that's one of the cool features of Art Rage is it, it does imitate pastels fairly well. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, the, the colors are actually getting mixed right as I paint them, which is pretty much what would happen if I was uh, working with straight pastel. I'm going to come down here, getting a little bit more orange into it. Okay, and I'm going to 
take that down there. Now I'm going to blend. Uh, blending is kind of a challenge with this software. They don't have a great blender. Uh, so the palette knife tool is what I use. Uh, and I'm using uh, the, uh, it's the setting on that is hard wet blender. And I've got it set up to pretty high, about a 72. So that's basically me. This is basically like me taking my finger and uh, smearing and smudging and uh, blending the, the chalk with my hand. And that's one of the cool things with pastels, especially. You can create a, just a really pretty sky effect uh, just with laying it down and then, you know, blending it, softening it with your hand. And I think I've said it before, but depending on the, uh, you know, what the focus is on your picture, you know, because we, we like to, to draw dramatic skies, but if you make the sky too dramatic, uh, then depending on what you're actually drawing, it can, it can draw attention away from your subject matter. In this case, we're going with just a very colorful sky, uh, but in a sense, it, you know, we don't mind it uh, taking some of the attention because there's not a lot else that's uh, going to come into this picture. Uh, it's, it's pretty much sky and grass which is why it's a fun and easy one to do. Okay, now I could refine that and make it make it more detailed, but we're going to leave it at that. And I'm going to move on. I'm going to go over here and uh, pick up my black. And now at this point, I would be switching to a uh, Sharpie marker. I'm going to turn my oil brush all the way up to 100%, and I'm going to just lay in down here at the bottom uh, some just solid black. Now, I'm, I would typically, if I were using physical media, uh, be staying horizontal. It doesn't matter as much here because uh, you're not going to see any of the, any of the grain uh, that I'm laying down. Uh, but uh, with, with a marker or something like that, you want to try to at least, you know, kind of keep that horizontal and go over it to get rid of the, the uh, excess uh, or, or little places where the paper is shining through. You want that really solid through there. Okay, now I'm going to shrink down. So I would be using now a smaller marker instead of a great big one, more of a fine tip. And now I'm going to just come up and I'm going to just start drawing the grass in. And, and don't don't overthink this. Don't try too hard. Just have fun with it. You know, that's the, that's the best part of doing something like this is, uh, you know, just throw those grass blades in there and, uh, and have a good time with it. Try to get variety. Okay. Don't go, you know, like this where they're all the same length. Uh, you know, get, get variety in there. And don't be too tied to the reference picture. The reference picture is to give you an idea, but it's not really to be your, you know, your crutch or your template. It's just something you're going to work from. Uh, okay, so, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, <coughs> excuse me, in the bottom area, and I'm going to go really quickly because I want to thicken that in through there. I don't want it to be where, you know, you're seeing a lot of this, you know, this baseline here. I want, I want a lot of that to be kind of covered up, but I don't want it to be solid. I want, I want a light to poke through so you get the feel that you're, you know, you're looking, you know, maybe you're crouching down and laying on your stomach and watching the sunset and, you know, the grass is in your face and, uh, you know, it's just a really cool time. Okay, so now if you'll notice on the reference picture, where did it go? It's hiding over here. There it is. Oh, okay. Notice in the reference picture, there are a couple uh, of these that go up and hit the edge of the picture. And, and it's important to do a few of those. Um, it just, uh, it, it gives it a, a much better look. So I'm going to you know, do a couple up here that are nice and long. The last one that I did is floating in the air. I don't want that. Okay. A little variety, you know. My uh, stylus is slightly off of where it's supposed to be off of alignment, so it's drawing in a different place than where I uh, am telling it to draw. Now, I didn't do this on a sec second layer, so I can't erase that mark. If I do, I'll erase my sky, too. So I'm going to have to leave that. So what I'll do is I'll go back here, and I'm going to try to go a little bit slower. There we go. And 
And one other thing is you notice that there's one of these blades, just one, uh, that has, you know, kind of the fuzzy things on the end of the grass blade. And I'm going to just do that with this one up here. I'm going to shrink my brush down even farther. And, and again, I'm not really trying to overthink this or make it, you know, super detailed. Now you can see I would have... I should have done this in a separate layer because you can see my my marker is actually blending a little bit and picking up some of that sky, but that's okay. Okay, and you know there you have it. Uh, I can't even get a good signature out of this brush; it's too small. Let me make it bigger. Oh well, not that important. It's like painting on wet wet paint, so it's not working well. Uh, but that's the idea, uh, <clears throat> and mm, excuse me, I don't like that. I'm going to take that out. Um, that's a real simple project you can work on this week. Uh, just all you need is a Sharpie marker uh, and whatever other materials you have. Again, remember, work with what you have, not with you, what you don't have. Well, we are out of time already. It was a very fast half hour. Next week, we're going to go on and uh, we'll be in the next lesson in art class, lesson 18. It'll be focusing on proportion and we'll have another good lesson for you. So I hope you will uh, keep painting. You'll practice this maybe this week. Uh, send me what you, uh, uh, what you do. Uh, and uh, uh, I, haven't, I haven't done any, uh, any shout outs in, lately, but uh, you know, I'm going to start that up again. So, uh, so send me your work. Uh, send it to, you know, just so you can send it in a direct message to the Facebook page or whatever. Uh, but I'd like to see it and I will give you a shout out. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat is telling me it's time to stop talking. So I'm going to. I'm Jim Pence with See the Light. We've had a great time. I will see you next week for Art Class Live. <laughs>